our Lala story. It says Lala Kent dishes on call from Vanderpump Rules producer season 11 cast and reunion antics, plus talks Tom and Raquel and lesson from 50 Cent and weight loss. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Lala Kent is looking ahead to the potential, but yet to be confirmed, 11 season of, Van- 11 season of Vanderpump Rules. I think they'll confirm after the reunion, you know, sort of like how they do with the housewives, but we'll keep going. During a podcast appearance last week, before admitting that she went too hard at the season 10 reunion, Lala shared her thoughts on the issues that led up to Tom Sandoval and Raquel Levis' affair, shared what she's learned from 50 Cent, and addressed her weight loss after her messy split from Randall Emmett. When I lost a significant amount of weight after my relationship ended, I was so insecure because I was skin and bones, Lala revealed on the April 27th episode of the Sophia with an F podcast, and I'm still trying to get the weight back on. Although Lala has faced physical challenges due to her and Randall's breakup, which she claims was prompted by chronic cheating, her mom, Lisa Burningham, has continued to be supportive. My mom always said, you look amazing. Now when I have a conversation, she tells me, yes, I was worried because you couldn't consume food. You always look beautiful, but I knew you weren't eating, she revealed. As for what she learned from 50 Cent, who attacked her and Randall on Instagram in 2019, excuse me, reality blurb, I have a problem with you. I'm about to get into my feelings right now. Do not say 50 Cent attacked her and Randall on Instagram in 2019. I don't like this narrative. Maybe I'm being sensitive, but here we go. I don't like that, and I don't want to make everything about race, but 50 Cent is a black man, and you're saying 50 Cent attacked Lala and Randall on Instagram? Reality blurb, you're doing the absolute most. He didn't attack her on Instagram. He did a post about Randall owing him money, and Lala inserted herself into it, and that's why we call her Lauren from Utah from this day. Shut up, reality blurb. All right, let's keep going. And Randall for failing to pay him because words matter and saying he attacked. I don't know. That just hit a nerve. That just that hit a nerve. That just hit a nerve. Let's keep going. After Randall failed to pay him one million dollars he owed. Lala said the rapper taught her to go public when she needs to get something accomplished. I have found by adopting 50 Cent's way of getting stuff done, you blast people on Instagram and then they come correct like like he did to my ex, she explained. Lala then addressed Scandaval, noting that Raquel seems very young. She's 28 years old and should know better than to engage in an affair with Scandaval behind the back of her best friend, Ariana Maddox. I mean, kindergartners know not to cheat. So, yeah. And Raquel is no spring chicken. She's 28. I think anything that happens after 25 and you're still acting like a Sandoval or a Raquel, something needs to happen, she stated. You're either hardwired differently where you just are an effing lost cause, which is how I feel Sandoval is. I don't think there's any effing helping him. Or you're like a Raquel where there's been a lot of things that have happened to you in your past that maybe you haven't dealt with properly and it manifests itself into something like this where you're not exactly aware of. I don't know. Effing your best friend's man, like I don't know, I don't know that is probably not okay. This is the thing. I think that Tom Sandoval and Raquel are beyond, quote, repair. Because I think it's something about their own personality disposition. Like what like it's in them. I think it's I think it's different. Like, I don't think that whatever Tom Sandoval has, whether it's narcissism, whether it's Ego- egotism, whether it's borderline, whether I don't know, I don't know, whatever the quote diagnosis is, maybe it's just evil. I don't know. I think that they have two different illnesses going on. And I and I hope you understand what I mean by that. Like I, I get I think there's something truly wrong with both of them. It goes beyond being a cheater. It even goes beyond being a liar. Like there's a tick. There's something wrong. And I think that whatever it is, it's it's different. Like both of them are horrible, but for whatever reason, and I'm not being sexist, I think there's something more wrong with Raquel. Not because of the cheating, but just because of like her. Like there's nothing behind her eyes. She seems to be getting pleasure out of this. She doesn't like care 
she, and then she was able to like lie so easily. Like, these are all my people. These are my forever friends, you know, looking at Ariana and her face being like, well, if he is cheating on you, then I'll be there for you. Like all the weird stuff, you know, we're going to see in the next episode, her buying the necklace, you know, and all of that stuff. Like that takes a special type of crazy. That's a special kind of evil. That's a special kind of difference. And the reason why I say evil I'm not talking religious or spiritual or anything like that. What I mean by evil is if you take pleasure in the knowing that your actions directly or indirectly is hurting another person and you don't stop, but instead you continue to engage and you take pleasure out of it, that's what I mean by evil. And I think Raquel and Tom, both of them are guilty of that the way they did Katie, the way they did Ariana, the way they did Kristen, the way they did X, Y, and Z, it was like they were getting pleasure out of knowing that they were lying to these people, that these people were being hurt. It was like it was like a sick power thing. Exactly, Chocolate Chunks. Exactly. They are different types of narcissists. Thank you, Chocolate Chunks. And that's how for being um, a channel member. I really appreciate that. It's a different type of narcissism because there's probably like the spectrum, but they're both on it. That's what I mean. It's sick because it's not about the cheating. Cheating, we don't even care about that. Not that we don't care because obviously that's wrong and horrible, but it's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. According to Lala, she believes Sandoval is wired differently while she feels Raquel simply needs to work through her past trauma. See, I disagree. I think Raquel is actually scarier than Sandoval. Just on a gut level, there is something scary about her. When you can look somebody's mother dead in their face without flinching with the way she did Katie's mom about how she hurt her daughter, that's that's scary to me. If you can look somebody's mother dead in the face and not even give an F. Like, yeah, I did ask Shorts if he wanted to make out and kiss me. I did. And the mother is sitting there in tears being like, they're not even divorced yet. She's crying over just having to sell her house. When you can look somebody's mother in the face and do that, that's a different type of crazy. I don't agree with Lala on that one. That's a different type of crazy. I don't think she's a bad person. I think she's a broken soul, Lala explained, noting that she couldn't imagine how Raquel was able to remain close to Ariana amid her romance with Sandoval because she's a bad person and a broken soul. That's why she's a bad person, because her soul is broken. Get with it, Lala. Like, you're usually on it, but you're drinking the Kool-Aid now. Good girl. Can you imagine someone coming to you and confiding in you about the ups and downs of a relationship and you sit there and cry with them and you're effing um, best friends and all the while you look them in the eye while you're, brain, while you're banging their dude, she wondered. As a result of the devastating betrayal, many have wondered if the couple will continue to appear on Pump Rules and if anyone will film with them. We got a call just saying like, how are you feeling about the situation? Lala shared. We haven't gotten the call to pick up cameras back up again or gotten a green light for season 11, but they always feel us out. And for me, whether they come back or don't come back, it's all the same to me. Because Lala was never close to Sandoval or Raquel, she feels happy that she won't have to pretend to like either of them in the future seasons. I was putting a happy face around Sandoval sometimes because I care about Ariana. And for a minute, we weren't close because I was like constantly attacking her dude. So I was like, if I care about Ariana, I got to reel it in. Lala noted. So now everybody feels the same way I feel. I'm thriving. As for who she hopes to be part of season 11, Lala said she was hopeful for some good looking men. I just want them to bring on men who I'm attracted to. It's the least you can do is bring someone who I think is attractive, she shared. I'm going to start looking at Instagram and sending photos of hot people. Side note, I agree on this. I do think that there needs to be some fresh blood on Vanderpump Rules. There, there, there needs to be a zhuzh. You know what I mean? There needs to be some freshness. There needs to be some some fresh blood. I agree. I think that um, there... I think there needs to be, and I said this before, I think there needs to be fresh masculine energy and fresh female energy. And I don't mean like sexes or sexuality or anything like that. Like, I think there does need to be some new guys on the show and there needs to be some new girls on the show. You know, I love the girls, but we got it. We, we Katie, I love you, but we got it. Sheena, 
whatever chick, we got it. Lala, I love you, but we got it. You know, Schwartz and Sandy, I don't know what the hell that's going to look like. And then we just have James and then Peter every now and then. We need some new men. We need some new men. Um, And we need, like, good casting. Because the whole Brett and Max from a couple seasons ago, that was garbage casting. They brought nothing to the show. Um, We need also need, like, Jack's energy. Maybe not Jack's himself until he takes accountability, then he can come back. But until then, he can stay on people's couch. But we need, like, a Jack's energy guy. I'm not saying someone who's a douche or cheating. I don't mean all that stuff. But someone who, like is the number one man of the group, that alpha energy, because the weasel, beta, yucky, pathetic Schwartz and Sandy that we got, that ain't it. That ain't it. And to be honest with you, had it not been for Scandoval, I don't think this season would have been it. This whole season just would have been about Raquel whining that she aged out of pageants looking like SpongeBob SquarePants. That's what Lala calls her, not me. You know, it, that, it wouldn't have been it. I'm sorry. I know Sheena got married, but I don't care she got married again. I don't want to watch four episodes of her crying in Mexico because Katie is giving her the cold shoulder on her wedding day. Sheena, it's your wedding. Why are you worried about Katie? Weird pick me behavior. Oh, that's right. Because Sheena had already been married for an entire year. So this was just a party in Mexico. <laughs> like how did no, like we just glossed over the fact that Sheena had been married for a whole year and this whole wedding was really just a big white party in Mexico everybody wear white show up at the wedding and, and hang out she'd been married for an entire year it's like the inverse of a Robin Dixon <laughs> it's ridiculous like the fakeness of it all, the fakeness of it all. You're making such a big deal about your wedding and you've already been married because your husband needed a green card to stay in America and he got you pregnant and you knock, and he got knocked up. So you married him so he can get his green card so he could stay here and play daddy, daddy, boo, boo to your beautiful goober baby. And that's no shade to Sheena and Brock. I, I really like them. I hope they're happy. But girl, call a thing a thing. Okay, here we go. Looking back at season 10 reunion, Lala admitted she went the hardest out of anyone. When I roll up on a producer and I say, I think I went a little too hard, and instead of that producer, who usually always tells me you did effing amazing, that was incredible, then they tell you, yeah, we were going we were going to try to reel you in a bit. That's like, you definitely maybe, maybe a little went a little too heavy on the paint, she reasoned. Even though I didn't like these people, I wasn't close to them. It didn't really directly affect me like it did Ariana or Sheena. These are two people who are constantly telling me you need to be real. You're a mistress. So for me, I was like, now I'm coming for you. She continued. Side note, I think I think that's a really good point to bring up. You know, again, with the evil and the diabolicalness of it all is because Schwartz, not Schwartz, Sandoval has always tried to act so self-righteous. Like he calls everybody out, Lala, you know, you're a mistress and you're a bimbo and you're this, that, and the third. And, you know, Stassi, you're horrible. And Jax is a cheater and Katie is so mean and blah, 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 blah. But yet, out of everybody, Jax included, Tom Sandoval has done the most grimiest, dirtiest, snake-like stuff ever on this show. Yet he acted like he was up here and everybody was down here. He was so self-righteous and so judgmental. So Lala, give him Lala, give it to them. Because I would feel the same way. If you for years kept coming at me and coming at me and coming at me for a mistake I made one time in my life, and then you find out that you've been doing this the entire time. And the sickest part is, this is the sickest part. They were still doing it. This entire season, again, it smells like Sandoval. When um, Raquel was at whatever pool party they were at right before Sheena's wedding, and they were all coming for Katie um, about her keeping her room in Mexico. And Raquel and Lala get into it at the party. And Raquel, regurgitating Tom Sandoval words, you're a mistress, you're a bimbo, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. But at the end, but the entire time you're looking at Lala calling her a mistress, you were having sex with Tom Sandoval. 
and Ariana was right there the entire time. Like, that's the sickest part. They were still doing it. It's like you sat there, you called her a mistress, and then probably when they rapped, you went and had sex with Tom Sandoval. It's crazy. It's crazy. And we know they were smashing then because of so many parts of the timelines. But specifically, we know that they were smashing because that that pool party happened after the whole Peter thing happened with um, Raquel and Peter. And then don't forget, Peter came out and told it on Kristen Doty's podcast that Tom Sandoval had texted him and it was like, yo, did you hook up with Raquel that night? And I'm like, the only reason why Tom would care if Raquel hooked up with Peter that night is if Tom had had already started having sex with Raquel himself. And this happened episodes way before the fight does. And as we've seen, they were smashing for months, for months, probably all the way back last year, Coachella. For months. So sick. So sick. All right, here we go. Because you literally have been saying that you're going to teach me what two plus two is, um, teach me that two plus two is four. Trying to school me on life when this is the character trait you possessed and now acted on and still knowing y'all were doing this had an effing audacity to call me a mistress and tell me that I need to be real. I was pissed. That's another thing. They kept telling her, oh, you need to be real. You need to be real. And then the entire time living a lie. And I'm also going to call Ariana out for this. Ariana was also living a lie. I don't think she was being, and Lala said this when she was asked who's the most different off camera, she said Tom and Ariana. I do think that both Tom and Ariana for a long time were playing a part on TV to protect their brand as a couple. But I don't think that she realized, I, but I don't think that she was broken up with Tom and lying. I think that she was just protecting the cracks. Do you know what I mean? All right. Well, let's move on to our next story and put it down below. Let me know what you guys think. All right. 